Okay, so I've gotten this comment a few times in the last couple of weeks, and essentially people are asking to update the Red Dragon Archery deck profile. Now I know I took a little bit of time to get this done, but I really wanted to put together a really solid list for you guys, and that's what we're doing in today's video. This list essentially has a good mix of a little bit of everything, so it's really good. It has a lot of cards that combat against today's meta, but it also has a lot of consistency and a lot of gas in the deck. So I think now is a good time to update it, and I feel like I have a very powerful and very solid build for today's format. So let's get right into it. We are starting off with three Soul Resonator. Soul Resonator, of course, is one of the most important cards in your deck. It essentially gets all of your combos off, and it itself is a one-card combo, right? So as long as this resolves, you're pretty much able to get anything you want, wherever you want to get to with this deck, right? We're also playing three Crimson Resonator. It's kind of similar in the sense of, while it's not a one-card combo on its own, it's important because this is how you resolve a lot of your combos, having this summon to your side of the field, getting extra bodies. This gets two bodies on its own to the side of the field, so it's, it's really powerful. Very important in that sense. And then two Vision Re Resonator, as well as two Synchron Resonator. I think the reason you want to play these at two is is because honestly, they don't really do much by themselves. This will recur any of the other names if you need it to recur the names, which is really nice. This is a card, or this is a card, essentially these two are targets that you can summon out of your deck. So it's really important to be playing two and two because if you do draw the one, you do want the second one in deck. And that's why I like playing two. Honestly, I would cut this to one if it wasn't for me needing one in deck at all times. This in hand is not a brick for you though. Like I'm gonna be honest, it's not a brick for you because it does special summon itself out to the, your side of the field. But uh, I will say that it doesn't really start your combos, which is why I think two is a perfect ratio. One card that does start a lot of combos and is very important for a lot of your combos is Bone Archfiend. This is one of the main extenders in the deck. It uh, can level modulate, which is really important because being able to level modulate means that you can have access to your level six synchros, your level eight synchros, uh, even level seven if you really need it to be, right? So three Bone Archfiend, very important. And then lastly, one of the obsessive uh, Oove Loops. This card is really powerful. I think it's a staple in RDA. This card just synergizes so well with how these combos work, being able to banish your cards and then with this pattern, of course, bringing back your cards, this is an extender for you, etc., etc. One of this, this is all you need. You don't need more than one. Uh, and the nice thing is that this is an earth, so you're never going to be worried about it getting hit with a bestial card, for example, right? So one obsessive oof loops. And then for consistency, of course, three Crimson Gaia, one card combo, one card combo. you got to max out on them. And then three Resonator Call, which gets you to your one card combo. So you have three, six, nine one card combos in this deck, which is absolutely insane. So very consistent with this deck. The thing is with this deck is like, you really, as soon as you see one of these one card combos, you're pretty much good to go. Everything else just becomes an extender from there. And then we're also playing one of the red zone. This card you're gonna wanna end off your a lot of your combos on because this in itself is just such a powerful card. It gets a pop for you. It gets to recur your synchro monsters. Very powerful card in its own. So that's it for the synchron engine over here. This is gonna get you into all of your synchro summon plays. And then for hand traps, we are playing a decent hand trap lineup as well as I guess board breakers as well. But we're playing three Ash one crow and three imper so you guys might be wondering why are you playing the one crow and that's because we actually are playing a called by as well as three cross l now crow is very popular in today's format just because uh you know a lot of decks are graveyard based right now and a lot of people are meaning crow in their main decks so playing the one crow is really good for the cross out it in itself obviously if you draw it is really good into today's format so of course playing the one is never bad three ash three imperm these are the two hand traps that kind of hurt you the most imperm specifically so that's why i like playing the cross out with these hand traps over here but the thing is i'm gonna keep cross out over here because I kind of want to talk about some of the other cards. Now, while Crossout is really good for hand traps, it's really good for a lot of the other staples that you guys are going to see in today's meta, and we're playing a lot of those staples. So first things first is we're playing three thrusts, two tactics, one prosperity, one harpies, and then I guess lastly, just one Foolish Burial. Foolish Burial, you might not see as much, but I want to talk about these staples, right? So essentially, most decks are on three pros. And the reason we're only on one is because you actually don't need Prosp in this deck. I showed you guys there's nine ways to one card combos. There's a lot of redundancy in this deck. So playing multiple Prosp does kind of two things for you. One, it gets you to cards you might already have. And two, it thins out your extra deck, which you kind of don't want to do because the extra deck already is pretty tight in this deck. So I like playing the one Prosp because if you do see it, you can activate it, of course, worst case scenario. But if you don't see it, great cross out target, great cross out target, great cross out target. Especially with this deck, it loses pretty heavy to these two cards specifically right over here, Talents and Thrust. Uh, you can play a lot of, around a lot of hand traps, but it's difficult to play around these because you are reliant on your monster effects on your opponent's turn. So for that reason, being able to cross out both the hand traps, but these cards as well is absolutely insane. So that's it for the main deck. I think it's 40, it might be 41, but uh, I think it's 40. But moving on to the extra deck over here, I do want to say that this extra deck is, I guess, pretty standard. There's not a lot of things that you can actually play in this extra deck just because the pool for uh, a lot of the RDA cards is very small. But you want to play three Red Rising Dragon, very important to be playing three of this. It's not a once per turn, it gets all your combos started. Very, or I 
should say it's not a hard ult per turn, is what I should say. But it's very important for a lot of your combos. Two of the scarred red, as well as two of the regular RDA. Uh, I like playing two and two. I don't want to play one and one. You could, in theory, play one and one. The thing is, there's not really that much better cards to be putting in here. And you don't want to be in awkward situations where you want to go into the second one and you can't. The second one is really good for the mid to late game. And then we're playing two of the hot red dragon, Archfiend Abyss. One of your most important cards. This is the card that you're going to want to end on all the time. We're playing one of the Bane, kind of helps you go into OTK, which is really nice. And then Scarlight, of course, going into time is really powerful. And then one Supernova. Supernova is a one card combo that you can get into this. This against a lot of decks on its own is just auto win. So being able to set this up, it becomes uh, a big beater for you. It's already 4,000 attack, but it also gains attack. So this can help you OTK as well. Then of course, we're playing the one Dispatter. Uh, very important for most of your combos. A lot of time you're gonna wanna end on Dispatter plus this at least at a minimum with a red zone. And then if you can get into this as well, you can, right? But typically it's just these two. Then we're playing one of the level seven Q-Ball. Um, this doesn't come up too often, but when it does, it can be really powerful. And then the last card can honestly be any level seven or level eight dark dragon synchro and you guys can play stuff like dark and dragon but i like playing beals this is just my saucy tech you don't have to be playing beals it's a card that you rarely go into it's kind of like a towers for the deck that you can make if you really you need to make something that's not just an rda so you can go into beals and if your opponent doesn't have an out for beals it becomes a nice beater for you but um yeah that could be anything it could be dark dark and dragon and or it could be this it could be any level seven or eight dark dragon synchro monster but that's it for the extra deck i'm gonna show you guys a side deck of course side deck is always gonna be up to personal preference but uh for my side deck i like to play three gamma seal i really like this card in rda because this deck does struggle with actually beating towers like monsters funny enough i was just talking about a towers but if your opponent puts up a towers like monster a lot of your cards target a lot of your cards destroyed by card effect etc etc and you can't do any of that against towers monsters right so gamma seal is very important of course against the uh, purely matchup is really good as well. We're also playing one uh, Magna Moot as well as two Druid Swarm and then two D DD Crow. So we're playing a lot of Graveyard Hate here. A lot of decks in today's format lose to Graveyard Hate. So you wanna be siding these. Of course, we're already mating the one Crow, which is why we're playing two in the side. But I like playing these because not only are they disruption for you, they're kind of like extenders for you. They're level sixes, which means with any level two Synchro, you can make a level eight, which is really powerful. And so I really like these for Graveyard Hate. I think just into today's meta is very important to play these. And then of course we're playing two Lightning Storm. We're already playing Harpies in the main deck, so two Lightning Storm just for more back row. One of the Herald of the Abyss, just a thrust target for you against Purely and some other matchups. Two D Barrier and two Evenly Match. So the reason I'm playing two and two for these is specifically because we're playing thrust and you could argue to play one and one. But the thing is, if you're choosing to go first, seeing the D Barrier is not bad. Because if you see the D Barrier, you can thrust into something else. And you don't want to be in a situation where you have thrust in your hand and you know D Barrier wins you the game, but your opponent doesn't activate a hand trap, let's just say. So you can't get into this, right? So that's why I like playing two, because if you can at least have a chance to see it. Same thing with evenly matched, going second, the sixth card, you have a chance to see it as a sixth card. Uh, if not, you can always thrust into it. So I just think these ratios make a lot of sense. But that's it for today's deck profile. I uh, appreciate you guys all for watching. I know this is a deck that a lot of people have been asking me about recently. This, I think this build itself is very powerful in a lot of different ways, like I mentioned earlier. It has a lot of cards to combat against today's meta. It has a lot of cards where you can play cross out and then not only is it good for hand traps, but it's good against a lot of other cards your opponents may have just because you're playing a lot of the staples. So thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you, Alpha, for being the best cameraman on YouTube. As always, I appreciate you guys. I think I said that already. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm the king of speed. Yep, I still got my touch. Thank you guys all for watching. That's thank you. Peace.